Fa'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Atiya Allah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And there was a reminder for myself and I'm the Qulaji so da'ifu, miskeen, zalim, jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, inshaAllah we'll, we'll let the audience set the direction of the talk, see what questions come up inshaAllah. InshaAllah. Thank all those for participating at the center, online, wherever they are, their khidmat, their service. And alhamdulillah Allah will give you more energy, make much more comments on the videos online, on social media platforms. Those improve the algorithms and the amount of share that the, those social medias will begin to allow that to be shared inshaAllah. So Allah dress everyone, bless everyone and we appreciate everyone's comments and participations inshaAllah. And those that we don't get to inshaAllah help me at noormuhammad.com inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it possible to spiritually experience the buraq or is that only for Prophet Muhammad Forgive me for the question. InshaAllah. I think the, the one asking the question has experienced the buraq. <laughs> why, 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 I don't know why, why you would… The, why, why the, the question of experiencing a buraq, maybe you, you felt that you had a spiritual experience and, and it's a different reality that when we, we go on a spiritual experience the nafs is a buraq. If the nafs is not controlled is the buraq that takes us into Jahannam, a ride and a steed in which quickly rides to and towards our punishment. And it is a, a vehicle that will manipulate our system. So for our purpose of understanding then it's going to be the nafs. And when the rider, the soul is conditioned and strengthened and we take whatever Prophet gave to us and we forbid whatever Prophet forbade for us, that will give us the strength, that will bring the Divine Rider into their power. Everything that Prophet brought is to weaken and let… As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Lessen the authority of the nafs over ourselves. So the nafs becomes shariq with shaitan, both from the source of oceans of difficulty. So all of the sunnah, these energy practices, the salah, everything of Islam and the realities of how to open the realities of iman and faith are all geared towards weighing the nafs down. So from what we do, how we wash, what we eat, outside, inside practices are going to destroy the nafs. So now and the condition of people now, the difficulty of people now is food. So there's a tremendous amount of negativity within the foods. So the du'a in the food, controlling the food, intermittent fasting, not eating often and trying to reduce the content of the food within the body so that to lessen the authority of shaitan and the nafs upon the body, creating difficulties upon the body, creating difficulties upon the the physicality, mentality and spirituality. 
so that all the practices and realities of what Prophet brought for us then was to battle the nafs. If the nafs becomes somewhat tamed and weighed down, it's like a horse that you're not going to get rid of it, it has to be tamed. That it's so weighed down with all the practices that it begins to use its effort for the servant. And that's where we always give the description and the example that why Ramadan is so powerful because it shows us that's possible. When the nafs knows that you, you're serious about your Islam, your conviction for entering into fasting is serious, you're not going to play with that and within two or three days the nafs is working for you in Ramadan, pushing you to get up for suhoor to eat, pushing you to eat good because it doesn't like hunger. And so people find themselves waking up no problems, getting ready, beginning to do their fasting and that then is a sign that the nafs actually, actually can be ridden if it knows the rider knows what they're doing. Similar to a horse, they say if you get on a horse with fear and you don't know how to ride most likely it will buck you off, it kicks and throws the rider off. Because it understands you don't know how to ride and your fear and anxiety is sending a signal to that creature. The nafs is more complicated but understands that the rider is not serious. So then begin to block everything. So it's a matter of declaring your, your battle with yourself. So that, that is the tariqah. So in everything we do the battle is with the self, never to self-gratify, never to give the self its credit, never to vindicate and exonerate the self. In everything my nafs is wrong and those are then the powers upon the soul. So the path of humility is greatly understood by people that to be humbled is exactly what it means, is to be brought down, the bad character to be brought down. And the path of humility is then difficult for people, especially if under stress and, and a strenuous test, if they don't keep their way they can break and as a result of breaking they lose their character, their manner and their adabs. And that becomes then against the way of Prophet against the ways of tariqah. And that means that the person has now unleashed their nafs which is a, is a fierce demon that no matter how long you tamed it, if you allow it to be sort of unleashed it becomes the demon that it has always been. You know who knows are alcoholics, drug addicts, people who struggle against their bad uh, vices and Prophet described it for everyone, Ya Rabbi don't leave me for a blink of an eye to my nafs which was the reality for all those whom are suffering. That don't think you've ever entered a state in which is gone, that you entered a, an elevated state where, oh I'm so high that you know I can allow my bad character to come out. It's a continuous struggle to keep that demon down and that's why the self-punishment and self-discipline is so important. So the abstinence of food, the abstinence of drink, the, the discipline of uh, ibadah and worship and all that Prophet gave to us is for that reality. So that, that becomes the great struggle. So when people's energies are too wild, shave your head for men, not for women. Because there's a, a wild nature in your long and beautiful flowing hair. So this was the struggle that Mawlana Shaykh always described for us and trained for us is that you know come against yourself when something's not right in your character and you're feeling a, a, a hawa and desire to come into your being, you begin to fast, you begin to give your charity, you begin to shave your head, you begin to make sure you're in your sunnah. The sunnah and the hat, the sunnah, the way, the ring, the asa is a shield for the believer, not a fashion statement for people 
Although it's, it is nice in these lands to show that you're Muhammadiyoon, it's because you're an ambassador. Especially if you have good character, you represent the Muhammadan kingdom. But as a immense power and shield for ourselves so that you take away the pride, take away the, the characteristics that make a person to begin to feel important and special and, and beautific. So shave your head, begin to fast, give your charity, keep your, your sunnah on, keep your hat always on, wear your ring. All of these were immense protection. Do your ibadah, do your worshipness and increase those so that to put a weight and a punishment upon the nafs. Not unleashing your tongue and going after people. That now you gave credit to your nafs, so now that demon is much now much more stronger. So the, this was the way and the way of Taskiyatul Awliya and this was the way of the history. So this is not just this man saying this, this is the way in which Prophet trained his companions, holy companions and that they trained those whom became awliya and, and saintly and righteous uh, characters was to fight yourself, punish your yourself and struggle against yourself. So that to discipline the self and recalibrate it and bring it back into submission. But as soon as you try to vindicate the self and, and exonerate and give excuses and un open and unlock your tongue then it's already a, a lost battle and now that demon is going to be uh, very fierce and come out even stronger. And then they have then the signs of stronger and stronger demons coming out and the character becomes worse and worse. So it's an immense battle and immense struggle to reach the, the oceans of realities inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Because a lot of ancient cities are being discovered now. What could it hold for us? Is there something going on in the spiritual world we need to figure out? And at the same time a lot of paganism is at rise, is this all connected? Everything is, is connected that whatever people try to hide is that uh, people who don't know their past, they lost their future. So people are coming onto this world thinking there is no past. Hence we can make our own future but there's nothing new under the sun. So as this world is coming towards its end, Allah will begin to uncover everything and say, don't you see all these civilizations however grand they were, you know we build buildings that are actually slave ships. Before the ship used to be wood and on an ocean. Now they build this ship maybe 40, 50 stories high, concrete and metal and it points into the sky. And they have little, little compartments in which people are living in them. Those are ships that point to the sky and they think they have accomplished amazing things. Then they uncover civilizations now that they were building homes in mountains as a hobby. The Thamud they were building homes in the mountains as a hobby, huge giants and many civilizations all around of immense stature, immense structures that in our technology today with our hydraulics and, and uh, all of our graphics and all of our abilities can't make those figures now, the symmetry of these structures. Nobody did those with chisels, how do they make a symmetric face with the ear in the right place, the nose, everything perfectly symmetric and they say they didn't have computers then and you're to believe that slaves built that with a rock and a piece of metal where there's no chisel marks on them. Means that Allah is showing that, no, no these civilizations were far greater than yours and I destroyed them. And they're nothing, they're not even a trace of them, you barely find their bones. So that mankind can understand, look to your past and you'll understand your future. 
you too will be destroyed and that there is no greatness, there is no superpower, there's only Allah's power and Allah brings everything down. So then in this state of death everything begins to come down. And, and that's why it's so important in difficult days and in difficult energies, don't put yourself up so that you're under the same tajalli of what Allah is about to destroy, right? So when they came to Sayyidina Musa Allah's punishment came as a direction that we're about to go into that town and destroy everything. Tell your people, mark their doors. Why? Uh, the angels know who they're going to destroy but it was for the people. The Shia, are they going to argue again with him? So they put the misbah which was this holy writing now that symbolizes the marking on the door. But the hikmah was the angels didn't know that, they already know exactly who they're going to kill and who they're going to stay, who's going to stay alive. But it was for the people to see, are they humble and are they going to listen to your guidance? If not, we will count them as amongst the Pharaoh, Mizrab and we're about to come down and level everything. If they're going to keep their head up, we're going to knock them down. So those from the community that didn't care to listen to Sayyidina Musa they were taken. And these angels come but one shout and leveled the whole town, leveled the whole environment. So means that in times of difficulty is not the time to try to raise your head. In the time of difficulty is the training to stay in sujood, stay, stay humble. Take a path in which to be nothing because there is like a guillotine coming and the ones whom don't care, they don't care, they stand up and the guillotine hits them. Means every type of difficulty that's heading towards this earth is going for those heads, is going for those whom think themselves up and think themselves independent, think themselves they don't need to, to submit and have tarbiyah. So then Allah's rahmah and mercy and that's why you look at Surat Al-Qamar and the beginning of it is all about a warning of destruction. It's haqqaiq is we're teaching you is about being a station of the moon. But interesting that the surah is all about azab. What, what's this duality? The Qamar represents the amazing station of the servanthood of Allah in which they reach such a point in which to reflect the light of Prophet Anything you do with that qamar is a reflection of your character to Sayyidina Muhammad But you should then read the surah because it's about Allah's azab and punishment, iqtarab al thought that when you and even more so for now that Allah says, look for the watchtower, the clock and clearly now there's a clock when people go for hajj, shakti wal qamar and then we split the moon. Means that these difficulties coming and the whole rest of the surah is about punishment. About difficulty coming, difficulty coming, difficulty coming, nations that didn't listen, didn't believe, that challenged the, the realities. So then the immensity of this path of light is based on testing, based on disciplining, based on lowering the bad character. Never to let the bad character to come out for if it comes out it's something not controllable. You unleash the demon, once you unleash the demon it's a thousand times more difficult to put a rope and try to bring him back in. And that's why then you look at what the surah and Allah's then the guide, read the surah and Allah begin then to describe. And all of that is then now related to reflecting Divinely light. 
So means then the path has its immensities that you'll be tested, you'll be tested. But this light that the moons are reflecting to you, the moons of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad they are reflecting the light of Rasulullah So how you treat the moon is a reflection of the light from the sun that's hitting to you. And that's why then their schools are schools of adab and manners and mannerism. So alhamdulillah then read Surah Al-Qamar for that these tajallis and these realities and these blessings that we're asking for then it has its testing and has its immense realities. So that those whom can keep this way of humility they can begin to achieve and they begin to follow the moon and they become under the tajalli of the moons of this nation. If not then they lose that tajalli, they lose that path and it inspired within them to go astray. So means then Allah in these last days and in these days of difficulty in which it's not even us anymore, you turn on the news and it sounds like Mawlana Shaykh Sobat's from 20 years ago. 20 years ago every sobat from Mawlana Shaykh was a warning, was this and this and this and this. 20 years ago is what 2004, 2005, 2003, not even that, even back into the 1990s. But even in 2000, now you turn the news on, every single event now is as if Mawlana Shaykh Sobat, war is here, financial destruction is here. Central bank digital currency, resetting all financial institutions, taking and wiping away people's accounts. What's what going to happen when they do like that? And all these big shots are buying homes in mountains and in caves and on islands that nobody can get to them. So <laughs> they, have, they bought themselves islands. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, you know, there's nowhere that people can hide from Allah. Subhanahu. <laughs> so they, they think they have to worry about hiding from, from physical but they should be more concerned about hiding from spiritual that can reach anywhere and everywhere. And if Allah open his azab, the true punishment of Allah is uh, doesn't have, have to be anything big and physical. When Allah wanted to take the largest tyrant on, on this earth was Nimrod. And he was so arrogant on the power of his nation and the power he had that Allah sent one mosquito and it became like a swarm of dark sky flying towards him. And Allah gave the command to the angel to one of the mosquitoes, you've been chosen by Allah to enter his being. And this cloud begins to transcend into his nation and their armies are fierce, you know, battalions are fierce. We can't even imagine today, we think we're so great with all these mechanical devices, how their nations were immense, immense in their military warfare and their might. Look at the buildings and the mountains they were carving. And one mosquito in this whole cloud came down and went right into his nose and into his nostril. Because they had no defense, all their missile defenses, all their, their vehicles they have, they don't have a defense from one mosquito. And the mosquito entered into his nose and then was commanded to take the presence of his brain, lodged itself within the brain and Allah immediately began to make the mosquito to grow to the size of a bee, a bumblebee and then like a hummingbird. <laughs> And inside his head stinging and pounding upon his brain. And the intensity of the pain as this thing is growing and just buzzing into his brain and eating away at his brain, he was telling people to hit it because there's no way to dig it out. So his people were smacking him with planks of wood as if Allah was just showing, look, look what I'm going to do to you now, I'll make your own people to beat you in the head. That you were thinking an outside enemy is coming, hide yourself from outside enemy. Say, I'm, I, I brought my smallest 
microbe, my smallest creature into your head and I make your own army to beat you in the head to take you off this earth. And they beat him, beat him, beat him until they cracked his head to take the hummingbird out. Means Allah when we say, Allahu Akbar, Allah's greatness and power and might is uh, something that has to be in sujood and into prostration. There is nowhere safe, there is nowhere anyone going to run to be safe except by the light and the love of Allah And they give us the key to achieve that because Allah's criteria is going to be very high. It's not the people whom always speaking about Allah that they achieve that but the one whom is the ishq and love of Allah his name is Muhammadun Rasulullah So awliyaullah give that in our life, you want Allah's love and you want Allah's protection, true protection and support, be fatabiyuni and follow the way of Sayyidina Muhammad in such a beatific way in which you've achieved the nazar, the holy gaze of Prophet upon you, your soul, your family and your community. If you fear that gaze means that nearness and that love with Prophet then no doubt Allah's with you. Allah's love with you, Allah's blessings with you, Allah's protection with you. If not, then what Allah gives for us, I will clean them in the hands of those whom have no mercy. Means a day when these people find that they can't get to their bank and they can't get to food, those are the people whom they mark themselves that not going to show very much mercy on this earth to people. And under the command of Allah because He's already given it to us and written it, that I will put you in the hands of those whom have no mercy, they will clean you before even the azab of the grave. This is the time we live in. So either you want to be cleaned by people whom have no mercy well, their cleaning I'm sure is going to be very frightening and very scary. Or you clean yourself and you stay within the tariqahs and the ways of imtihan and testing and you condition yourself, your mouth, your hands, your tongue into submission. So the path becomes so clear nowadays, that's why I said, watch the news. These are not you know 40 years ago Mawlana Shaykh's ta- te- teachings. Mawlana Shaykh's teachings now became live, you turn on the news and this one talk he gave about Bani Asrar and what these people will be doing. You turn another channel and then it's this teaching, you turn another te- So we're right now in it. So there's not many variables left, either you're going to sujood or Allah has uh, what's behind door number two. And people will make their own conscious decision. At that time you cannot say, what is this, what is this or what was that matter again and let, 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 let's get some help, what's going on? Either you chose the door number A or you walked away from it and you by default went towards door number B. And that's what Allah just describes in Qur'an, Allah by Holy Qur'an of those whom have no mercy. So alhamdulillah inshaAllah keep us with the ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad and under the guidance of the Qamaroon, awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard. And they require good manners and uh, loyalty, allegiance and discipline, strong discipline, inshaAllah. And don't sleep in the zikrs. As salaamu alaykum, Mawlana. Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. What was the means by which Firaun kept Musa salam enslaved so that he might power his kingdom with electricity, lightning? <laughs> yeah, I didn't keep him enslaved, but Nabi Musa had the secret of power. 
and the secret of their, their pyramids that they were used for electricity and energy and that knowledge was with Sayyidina Musa But he wanted to take his people and the people were more interested in taking their golden jewelry. So every day Sayyidina Musa would talk to Pharaoh, he would become angry from the arguments and then he would kill the people. For 40 years he did dawah upon on Pharaoh because why it took 40 years is because his people were not leaving dunya. That they wanted to go to the promised land but they wanted to take all their gold with them, all their jewelry, their dunya. They wanted to carry their entire dunya into the promised land. And after 40 years of begging Allah and his people being tormented and tortured by Pharaoh, Nabi Musa gave up and said, they're not going to ever change but please open the, the doors of your, your kingdom. And then the if subsequent events happened that Nabi Musa left and as a result Allah opened the ocean, took them to the Promised Land and then separated Sayyidina Musa from the people. And as a result of separating from the people Allah brought out their true desire is they wanted to worship Allah and worship the calf and the cow and they were inspired to make a big cow. And then Allah inspired them, put all your gold to make that cow. The same treasures they didn't want to leave, Allah inspired them, make your cow and they made it from gold and jewels. And then Allah destroyed when Sayyidina Musa came back down and said, you made a cow of gold and I told you don't do these things. And then the earth opened and swallowed the cow, their gold and the people whom worshipped that way. And as a means of their death that Allah accepted their tawbah and their, their asking of forgiveness. But made the worshipping of the cow to be dear to them. So that's why you see in front of all the financial markets a cow, a bull, bull market. So alhamdulillah Allah gave the, the guidelines and, and everything in Holy Qur'an and there's nothing new under the sun, everything repeats itself, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the connection between the moon with silver and gold with sun? Why human use gold to make himself prominent in society? Why any other metal do not carry same value on earth? Moon oh, being silver and the sun being gold. Yeah. Mm. Alhamdulillah, the currency for Allah is gold and silver mentioned in Qur'an and that the, the gold is not made on earth and the elements of gold are not made on earth. That actually comes they say from the rays of the sun and that the elements of the sun bring gold onto this earth. And its rarity gives its value and because it's not coming, it's not made from the earth but it's through the veins that they'll find it within the earth that were deposited by the rains of the shams and the reality of the sun. So it has an ancient reality, an ancient value and as a result Allah holds that value as the currency and heavenly currency. And that should have been the currency of nations but they're clever and they switch and bait that they gave us paper and they took the gold. And it used to be your paper was like a promissory for the gold that they have and they would hold for you. Then they took away the gold and now people are just transferring useless paper back and forth. Now they don't want to even print the paper and they want to send it digitally. But everything has to be 
for a Divine Baraka based on the gold and silver because it has its rarity and its value and it's a Divinely currency that Allah give to, to this creation as a means of commerce and trade, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum ya shaykh Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Shaykh what is Jabal Kaf? Who? Jabal Kaf <laughs> Yeah that's a big subject we've talked about <laughs> before, just you're throwing out random. <laughs> French fries too. InshaAllah the, the, we have a lot of these subjects on nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah and uh, everybody connect their hearts, meditate, keep your connection with the meditation, tafakkur and build the, the contemplation, build the connections with the, the shaykhs. Uh, do the, the daily accounting of oneself on how to connect what the bad character is and do your muhasaba on what I did wrong and uh, how my character is wrong and in everything that you contemplate not about other people but what was your role in every action. Muhasaba is never to sit and take an accounting of what this person did wrong and that person did wrong because then that's like you're accounting for other people which completely forbidden. But the muhasaba is to look at what you did wrong and every event that happened what did you do wrong in that event. Because you want to come against your nafs, you're not like an auditor for other people's nafs and you don't want to vindicate your nafs where you find this one did this wrong, this one did this wrong, this one did this wrong, what did you do wrong? And that becomes the way of muhasaba and an accounting for themselves. Those whom are good and successful in that then they can begin to purify, correct their account and then the next day becomes stronger and better. If their muhasaba is weak then they never grow because the same accounting error is just being carried forward and forward and forward and years of errors means their books are all destroyed. So the muhasaba is then to take an accounting of myself in which I'm going to come against myself. So never to vindicate the self, never to find that somebody else did something wrong but what did I do wrong? If I can live my way and live my life based on that then I can prosper that day, I can correct my books for that day and then I can enter the next day with a cleaner ledger because the next day will be more correct and more positive because you cleaned it that night that I understand what I did wrong in that event. And I take actions to correct that and then the next day you keep the same system of what did I do wrong in that discussion and in that argument and in that event, what was my role in it wrong? If the person can keep their muhasaba and they become successful in it, what happens? Then their accounting with Allah becomes very successful and as a result they're gaining sincerity. Because Allah is the auditor, Allah knows what the books are and wondering why you're not keeping correct books, why you're not keeping the a correct ledger. And that's what's important, the closer that we can reach to that, the closer that we can get into the oceans of sincerity and ikhlas and that Allah dress us from those lights and blessings. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Ashabadiya Rasul Kareem, inshaAllah we'll be preparing for the wiladat of Sayyidatina Fatima Tizari Salaam coming in next week inshaAllah on the 13th, huh? Yeah, either Thursday, Friday inshaAllah. For the holy birth of Sayyidatina Fatima Tizari Salaam, for her love, for her nazar, for the love of Ahlul Bayt and most of all the love of Sayyidina Muhammad for her immense nearness and proximity to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad 
that to make Prophet happy, inshaAllah we encourage people to do wells, do food, to do good deeds, to whatever we can for the owner of our beloved Sayyidatina Fatima Tazali Salaam inshaAllah and that we gain her holy nazar, her du'as, her prayers for ourselves, for our families, for our communities and that she take those prayers to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and if this holy powers and blessed souls take our accounts to Allah's Divinely Presence inshaAllah pure and purified. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.